so friends welcome to this lecture series of geomorphology and in this class we will continue with this uh, valley glacier that we are talking in the last class. So, valley glaciers or ice sheets are two different modes of glaciations. Ice sheet that means it is covering entire area and its thickness is about 2 kilometers in average and this movement is due to its own weight. And valley glaciers they are confined within these valleys in the mountains and they are continuously fed from this ice field which is adjacent to this uh, valley glaciers. And if you see this photograph, so this is this is a valley glacier and this entire is representing the ice field. So, ice field continuously provide glacier uh, ice to this glacier to maintain its velocity to maintain its continuity otherwise it will be in the ablation zone. So, as a thumb rule about 65 percent area of this valley glacier falls in the zone of ice field. So, that means less is in form of valley glacier more is in form of ice field. So, that it accumulates more ice and continuously supplying to this valley as valley glacier. An annual discharge of ice through this cross section beneath the equilibrium line is an important measure of glacial region. Though melting is a major factor in the valley glacier, but sublimation, wind ablation and iceberg calving are also takes into account for the contribution to ablation. So, that means we have different ways of losing of ice. One is this this ablation zone is due to sublimation is there, then the wind ablation is there, then iceberg calving is there, then erosion is there. So, that means by these are the ways this ice mass reduces gradually. A glacier will grow or sink that depends upon annual discharge through this equilibrium line cross section, net annual accumulation of glaciers and the net annual ablation in the down glaciers. So, to what extent the glacier will sustain? It will what extent it will continue? Whether it will remain there or it will melt? That depends any observation is made this cross section along this cross section through this equilibrium line. Like we they calculate the discharge, river discharge, the sediment discharge during this um, at different gauging stations. Similarly, this equilibrium line is one gauging station of this glacier at where we calculate how much glacier ice is being transported down glacier side and how much it is accumulated at a, a up glacier side when the, how much it is moving per day or whatever this unit we take. So, this measurement here it defines whether the glacier will sustain or glacier will melt. So, many large valley glaciers are fed by one or more tributary glaciers, but not turbulently as rivers. So, it is very interesting fact. So, there are two different levels. The tributary glaciers they remain at this higher level and the trunk glaciers they remain somewhat at lower level. And though they contribute their ice at to from from a higher level to a lower level, but at this confluence this system this level is same. This is due to the deformation that means is uh, this uh, glacier can easily be deformed. So, that this level becomes equal. So, tributary glaciers do not erode their floor as deeply as does by this trunk, trunk glaciers. The surface of merging glaciers join at the common level because ice is easily deformed and respond to this lateral stress imposed by an in entering tributary. For example, if you see in this figure here this these are the deformation. Now, see this are the tributary glaciers and it is contributing this main glacier valley glacier here these are the deformation line, these are the deformation line. So, that means the ice can easily deform, ice can easily adjust themselves. So, here if you see here these are the deformation line. 
So, that means, the cont contribution from this tributary glacier and once it is mixing with the main glacier, the main deformation zone is here. So, due to deformation, the level changes and the level becomes equal, they join at the uniform levels. Because of this nature of flow of ice, the tributary glaciers remains there or retains its identity as a separate stream or surface ribbon of this ice, although it may become progressively attenuated and uh, enfold into in the trunk. So, that you see here, suppose this is the valley glacier and this is the trunk glacier. Now, two glaciers they are merging together, but you see there are separate identities there. You can distinguish these glaciers from these glaciers. So, this is this identity it continues for kilometers for few kilometers and gradually these two glaciers merge and finally becomes one. So, this is due to this radity of this glaciers. This central part of this ice surface moves faster than this margin very interesting fact here. If you see this is the valley glacier and it is moving the central part is moving at a higher velocity as compared to its side. So, this is due to dragging effect. Here it is interacting with this valley, here it is interacting with the valley and uh, once you say this interaction is there, so there will be dragging mechanism, but here it is free to move. So, that this cross section of velocity will be and the surface velocity will be like the crescent shaft. So, that is uh, convex towards a downstream. Now, here if you see this figures are given representing this surface velocity as well as the internal velocity of this glacier. Here this is the surface velocity it is given and the surface velocity if you see at the surface the middle part of this glacier it is moving at a higher velocity as compared to the valley side. So, this is the valley if you see at this valley due to dragging effect this velocity decreases, but at this middle part the velocity is more. Similarly, if we go through this cross section, this through this cross section you see this velocity is more here and gradually it is decreasing and decreasing. The same thing also if you remember when we are talking about this fluvial geomorphology, the same thing as the reverse. The reverse velocity here it is maximum and gradually it is go down and down and uh, here it is towards the side of this valley it is also reduces. And uh, this is an interesting figure which is representing both this uh, lateral that means surface velocity as well as the internal velocity, the sliding frictions and this internal deformation or internal flow. If you see here and this is the valley and this filled with this blue one is filled with ice. Here once you are coming away from this valley side, this is valley and once we are coming away from this very side, this velocity is increasing. Similarly, if we are moving towards the bedrock, towards this base of this valley, this velocity is decreasing. So, this means these are this area where we are en encountering maximum velocity of a glacier. So, here this A C is the total movement, this is A and C, this is total movement is here. Then a b a dash b dash this a dash b dash here this is due to this a dash b dash and a b it is due to slide on this bed this slide on this bed is this much this much and what is b c this is the internal flow here this is the internal flow. So, that means at particular instance we say here this b c is more than a b that means here internal flow within the glacier is more as compared to its slide on this bed. So, slide on this bed the velocity acquired by sliding on the bed is less as compared to its internal flow. So, that, that means glacier movement in a particular direction at a particular place or a particular site is more due to its internal flow as compared to its sliding on the bed. So, here an experiment was carried out by inserting a drill hole here if you see this is the drill hole and this drill pipe was here after few time 
after some time if you see this system is here, but the shape of this this point has migrated to this place, but the shape of this drill pipe is bending like this. So, this is due to this internal flow and this is due to sliding on this bed and this is this much this sliding on the bed if you remove this sliding on the bed this is due to internal flow. So, that means internal flow is always more than the sliding flow on the bed and uh, if you move downward from the surface to this bedrock level gradually this characteristics or the rheology of this glacier it changes at this upper part here we are getting the brittle zone and below that it is plastic zone. So, that means at the upper part the glacier can be broken into pieces it is, it is, it is brittle it is fragments, but later on once we are going downward it is plastic deformation is there. So, that means the rheology changes with depth the internal velocity changes this frictional sliding friction with this bed is less as compared to its internal flow. Because most of this differential shear is very near to the base and lateral margins of this glacier, the mean velocity of the surface ice is within a few percent of this mean velocity of this entire glacier. So, that means this glacier it is moving at a faster rate at the surface level as compared to the subsurface level. Valley glaciers have much higher surface gradient than rivers commonly average of 10 percent or 6 degree on ice cliffs or ice falls it is steeper than 45 degree then in ice avalanches it is nearly continuous. The long profile of a glacier surface is like this river profile. So, here it is marked by some steep drops and marked by some levels areas of steep drops much like this gradient of this river through rapid and cross poles. That means, in ideal cross section in ideal uh, river profile it is like this that means, concave upward and uh, if you we have some rapids some lakes some uh, other types of local base level is there. So, we get a changes like this is not it. So, similarly in the glacier surface also if you are taking this cross section it is like, like this and these are this areas where we can say this is the, the bedrock is exposed the latches of bedrocks are exposed and this area is represented by extensional flow and uh, these areas are represented by compressional flow. So, that means within this movement from head to mouth within the glacier the flow velocity does not remain same. Similarly, there are certain areas where there are compression within the glacial mass and some areas where extension in the glacial mass. So, this extensional mass is represented by particular type of deformation that is called crevasses. So, what are the crevasses if you see here this is this profile of glacier surface and if you see the glacier surface is not as smooth as river one. Here these are these areas where ice fall or crevasses and you see these fractures. So, if you zoom it in a real field photographs here these are these fractures and these fractures if you see they are more or less parallel with each other and this is the direction of glacier movement and these fractures are produced where there are latches of bedrock exposed to this surface. So, that here we are getting this uh, extension and we are fitting this extensional cracks. So, crevasses they are this extensional cracks within that ice surface. So, ledges buried beneath this ice are reflected by crevasses fields and ice pinnacles on this ice surface. These are this ice pinnacles and this are uh, this uh, here we are getting some extensional cracks and this ice pinnacles and crevasses they represent the extensional regime within that glacial surface.
within the zone of accumulation of valley glacier velocity generally increases down glacier this is called extending flow extending flow is common where this cross ice crosses over the buried seal and drops rapidly at such places the ice may fracture into crevasses crevasses field crevasse field or simply within the rapid and extending flow so that means there are two types of flow one is extending flow here we are getting some extending flows and some areas just backs of this extending flow we are getting some compressional flow why compressional flow occurs now within the zone of ablation longitudinal velocity generally decreases perhaps zero at the toe of this glacier this is called compressional flow here we are, we are getting some compressional flow similarly if we have some latches like this. So, here this is this this area here compression occurs because this becomes a speed breaker. So, that ice mass accumulates here it thickens here. So, here this is the compressional flow and here extensional flow. So, that means within the ice mass there are differential moment. Beneath the ice regions of extending and compressing flow can control basal slip and determine whether the glacial erodes bed or deposit sediment. It is very interesting to see here. Within that glacier movement, whether this glacier will erode material or deposit, that depends upon this uh, which type of flow is associated. For example, if you see here, this is glacier movement and this area is representing compressional flow and this area is representing extensional flow. So, once we are moving glacier in this direction and we are restricting its movement by this. So, here ice accumulation occurs. So, the thickness of ice becomes more and due to this ice mass accumulates here, it shear stress it is moving here shearing on this bedrock surface is more. So, that abrasion occurs more abrasive topography more abrasion topography will be confined in here. But once it is moving here, it that means here ice is extending extensional flow. So, here blocking occurs. So, that means whatever the fractures are were fractures were there through the fractures, this blocking of material occurs, the blocks they are blocked by this glacier, and uh, this is due to blocking erosion occurs at this side of the, or this down downside of this latches. So, that means here we have compressional system, here we are getting extensional system, here due to abrasion, here due to blocking. So, two different type of geomorphic work is there. On the surface of most valley glaciers in the ablation zone, a variety of ephemeral landforms develop due to melting, collapse of ice tunnels and erosion by stream flows on it and on along these glaciers. Many features are analogous to this cast topography and the cast features and may be called a glacial cast. So, if you see here, once a glacier is accumulated at a place in the ablation zone, so that means it is losing this glacier mass. So, this losing may be due to this ablation, due to sublimation, due to calving. So, that means part of a glacier body, part of the ice body is detached from this man, man body and it is going down. Similarly, due to melting water is coming from inside of this glacier. So, this water coming through proper channels and it is creating a tunnel within the glacier body. So, within this tunnel if there will be collapse of tunnel. So, that means part of the glacier mass is removed. So, that means I want to say very irregular topography is formed, very irregular topography within that glacier body. So, this is equivalent to cast region. For example, if you see these photographs, this is the mass of the glacier and some structures like this, some topography you see these are the pits and uh, here this within that glacier, this is the whole uh, entire photograph is representing glacier surface. So, here the, there are some of the spawn type accumulation of water is there and if you compare this similarity of this with this glacier, this cast region see along this cast region there are uvala sinkholes. So, other types of uh, 
this blind valleys, caverns. So, there are many types of topography, many types of geomorphological features are there. So, that means, look wise and uh, geometry wise, these two topographies they are looking similar. So, that is why it is called glacial karst. And uh, here, if you see the karst topography, how irregular topographic, how irregular arrangement is there. Similarly, here some irregular arrangement is there, not this profile is not as smooth. So, that is why this system is called karst topography or this glacial karst in terms of glacier is concerned. And uh, there are two other types of uh, features that are found in this glacier system. One is called thaw lake or shallow holes, this is geological terminology is called moulin. So, mark the ice surface. So, here thaw lake, here it is a thaw lake. Thaw lake means it is a lake, it is a pond accumulation of water, but below it is not it is not connected with the bedrock through fracture or through any holes or so. It is that means it is a zone of water accumulation. It is called thaw lake. But once it is it is connected to this through this fracture to this bedrock. Here, if you see there is a hole, there is a sinkhole type in terms of cast topography, there is a sinkhole type. So, that means this water is gradually down through this system it is percolating down. This is the ice surface or the glacial surface and here due to melt water is coming and it is percolating down through this hole and it is equivalent to the sinkhole of karst topography. So, this type of topography, this type of features, this ponds and its surf, it the subsurface, it is connected to this bedrock through the fracture or through hole, so number of fractures. So, that it behaves as water accumulation zone. Here you see the streams, they are uh, supplying water to this moulin system and it is associated with the bedrock, then this terminology moulin is used. So, the difference between this terminology moulin and thaw lake is that thaw lake, it is not associated anyway to this bedrock through fractures, but moulin, it is associated with bedrock through fractures. Ice caps and ice sheet. So, so far we are discussing about this valley glaciers. So, valley glaciers they are confined within that valley. Now, we will talk about this second part of this ice system that is called ice caps. So, that means here this topography is near about smooth and uh, it is uh, the thickness is about to 1.5 kilometers to 2 kilometer on average and this glacier movement is due to its own weight. Ice caves and ice sheets are large unconfined glaciers here, it is large unconfined glacier, it is not confined, it is free from any side, all sides. The accumulation zone is the central region of this dome and the ablation zone at the periphery below the equilibrium line, but in the valley glacier we have the equilibrium line which is a cross section on the valley, but here as we see it is an ice sheet. So, here this may be this may be this equilibrium line. So, that means here it is a unconfined system, here the accumulation zone is at the center, it is that means if we are talking a cross section it is looking like this, similarly other side it will move like this. So, that means in a cross section this ice sheet will be like this. So, at the center part this is the accumulation zone and this side the all side yeah, you are looking a cross section, but all side it is this ablation zone and somewhere here may be the, the equilibrium line. So, that means the accumulation zone at the central region of this dome and the ablation zone at this periphery below the equilibrium line. If you see here this is the accumulation zone, this green, green color, this is the accumulation zone and this side is the ablation zone and here this is the equilibrium line. The regimen of such an ice cave or ice sheet is very sensitive to temperature. So, that means with this increase of temperature, this 
ice sheet it melts, the equilibrium line shifts and uh, this cross section also changes, both it is vertically it is goes down and laterally it shrinks. So, that means, it is as it is unconfined system, so this shrinkage is from all sides and similarly at the from the top and from the four sides or all sides from the system. Any increase in accumulation will increase the height and therefore, the area of accumulation zone relative to this ablation zone resulting in further accreted growth, accreted growth, accreted means addition, accretion means addition. So, any increase in accumulation will increase the height because we know that this surface it is looking like this cross section is looking like this and these are these regions of accumulation. So, once we are adding the ice here, once the adding that means we are increasing the height of this dome. So, increase the height of the dome in the accumulation zone and resulting in accreted growth. So, accreted that means we are adding the system. Conversely, a decrease in accumulation will lower the central dome, further decrease the relative area of accumulation and accelerate shrinkage. So, that means, once we are removing the system, we are also decreasing the system like this. So, that means, addition and deletion or addition or loss, uh, that means, accumulation and ablation that occurs at these zones. So, that means, once we are, but ablation zone is this, uh, that means, once we decrease the accumulation. So, this dome height will decrease, but ablation zone will be this side and side and here we are decreasing the accumulation. So, that means, the dome height we are decreasing. Theories of radial flows predict parabolic or elliptical radial profiles very similar to those of acutely actually observed. The ice must spread radially in plan view from this area of accumulation as well as outward along this cross section. So, now you see here we are talking here we are talking about a cross section. Here you see this system it is shifting that means from outward this movement is from the central part to outward. Similarly, if you see here these are the different lobes of this ice sheets and this ice it is moving outward. So, this is radial flow that means, if you see here in all sides it is a glacier mass it is from all side it is moving down. So, that means, here it will move here, here. So, that means, in a ice sheet the movement is for every sides on, on that means, from all sides of this system from the central part and in a cross section we can say it is from outward from central part to outward. If an ice sheet suppose in Greenland is surrounded by mountain ranges around much of its margin the ice moves between exposed or slightly buried mountain peaks that is called outlet glaciers and these have many of these geomorphic properties similar to valley glaciers. So, that means, suppose a ice sheet is forming and uh, that uh, ice sheets within this mountain system, this is boring a mountain system and uh, within that valley there are different differential movements and here suppose this valley it is or this mountain peaks are not completely buried. So, that means, here this part, this part, this part, this whatever the movement of glacier is there, it is similar to this movement of a valley glacier, but because in locally this part of this glacier it is behaving like a, a valley glaciers. And these type of glaciers a part of this main glacier or the ice sheet, but at this periphery or at the certain certain valleys where these peaks are not totally covered along this different peaks the, the glacier is moving in a confined this movement is a confined movement. And it is properties it is similar to that of uh, this property of a valley glacier. So, that means, the ice sheet though it is continuing a large covering a large area which is thickness is more at this central part, it is spreading sideway from this central region, but at this periphery 
it is if or at the, within that body if the peaks are there which are not covered by ice and uh, this glacier or this ice sheet is moving through this different peaks. So, at locally they behave as valley glaciers. So, that means I should stop here and we will meet in the next class, we will talk about uh, more about this glacier sheets or something else. Thank you very much, we will meet in the next class.